If you're a mobile music creator and you're interested to find out how the new iPad OS and iOS 13 are gonna impact you as a creator in the next five minutes, I'm gonna let you know. Let's go. Hi, my name is Pete and this is Studio Live Today where I help you create, record and release your best music through tips and tricks and tutorials. So if that's your bag, consider subscribing. But in this one, we're breaking down the recent updates announced by Apple at the Worldwide Developers Conference all around these new iOS and iPad OS updates. So let's jump in right now. So this update is focused on music. So if you want to learn more about the iOS 13 and iPad OS features, there's a link down below to CNET who put together a great summary of the rest. But let's talk all about music and the changes in this update. Before we get too excited, let's start with the basics. Who can get this update? What devices are supported? Well, it will support the iPhone 6S and SE and above. So if you're on a 6 or a 5 or anything earlier, it is not going to support iOS 13. On the iPad OS side, which is what Apple have rebranded their iOS equipment for iPad, you need an iPad Air 2 or an iPad Mini 4 or any of the above or any of the pros. So that's what you can use to run these new updates. One of the biggest things that was talked about was speed. So things are gonna be faster, updates are apparently gonna be smaller, downloads are gonna be faster, logging in is gonna be faster, and launching apps is going to be faster in iOS 13 and iPad OS. So for music creators, that's a good thing because the quicker you can get in, and if you're running multiple apps and multiple different sessions, it's gonna help speed up your process. That can only be a good thing. Again, the proof will be in the pudding where we actually run iOS 13 and iPad OS. Number two point that might make creators happy is dark mode. Yeah. Yes, iOS and iPadOS are finally getting a dark mode, which means you get that nice black background. It means if you're doing a lot of creating for a lot of hours in your creation apps, creating videos, creating music, then you're not going to get tired eyes from that bright white screen. So I'll be really interested to see how this integrates into things like GarageBand, Cubasis, Aurea, LumaFusion, all of the great creation apps that we use here in iOS. We will soon find out. Number three, we've got some changes coming to Apple Music. Now, iTunes is being retired, and yes, I don't quite know how to feel. I have a love-hate relationship with iTunes, but it's being replaced by Apple Music, Apple Podcasts, and Apple TV. Now, how does that impact creators? Well, not a lot, except that the platforms that you may be delivering your music to may be changing. And one of the cool things I did note is that there's going to be real-time lyric support for Apple Music, and how that will work in terms of uploading your lyrics through something like DistroKid will be to be determined. But stay tuned to the channel, because as soon as we know more about this, I'll be letting you know. Number four, and this one's buried in the weeds a bit. I had to get some help from folks over at the iPhone Musician Facebook group on this one. In the developer notes, there's something interesting. Inter-app audio is being deprecated, which means it's no longer going to be supported for new app development. Now, my take on this is that inter-app audio, which is the ability to use music apps within other music apps, will probably stay around in legacy support, but new apps won't be able to be created. But don't worry, Interapp Audio has basically been replaced by Audio Unit AUV3 plugins and the ability to communicate using Audio Unit. So this to me is actually a positive thing because it's going to make developers make sure that their apps are integrated within the Audio Unit framework. Point number five is that the Shortcuts app, which was the old workflow app, it was purchased by Apple, it's available for download right now in iOS 12, is going to be integrated into iOS 13. So finally, there's going to be a way to actually share files and to send files around and to do all of the cool things that we can do with the Shortcuts app, but it's going to be fully integrated in iOS 13, which is going to make zipping and unzipping and transferring and sharing a whole lot easier. And my final point here, and yes, I've 100% buried the lead on this one. We are finally getting USB flash drive support here in iOS. Yes, just after I made a video saying you can't actually use a thumb drive, you will be able to. So using the Apple camera connection kit, the lightning to USB adapter, if you don't know about that, check the video up there. You'll be able to actually hook up an SD card, a USB flash drive, and you'll be able to actually transfer and manage your files. So files is apparently getting a big upgrade, both in iPad OS and iOS 13, which is something Something that I'm going to be very happy about because the current file setup with iCloud Drive doesn't work. The other cool thing about that is we're going to have folder sharing within iCloud Drive. So right now you can share one file with another user to collaborate or to share. You're going to be able to share a whole folder and both of you or multiple people will be able to upload and download from that same folder. So they are some cool files updates and to me that's probably the biggest and yes it's a little sad that the biggest update is something that we've been able to do on every other platform for 20 years but it's happening it's coming it's exciting so there you go will these be a game changer will these be updates that you'll be excited about let me know down in the comments thanks again for watching you can subscribe to the channel by clicking and tapping in the top right corner go to studiolivetoday.com for even more audio goodness and i'll see you next time